we have this big old word problem. It says, in a time of t seconds, a particle moves a distance of s meters from its starting point. So this is my meters, depending on the seconds that I plug in, s equals 5t squared plus 3. And it wants you to find the average velocity between t equals 1, so average velocity between t equals 1 and t equals 1 plus h, where remember h is that gap. So what we really want is 1. So what they have you do is they have you start with h equals 0 0.1 and then they have 0 0.01 and 0 0.001 to see ultimately what is it going to, our limiting value. So if you remember, how do you find average velocity? Well, that's the slope. So that's the change in my s, which is somewhere meters squeaky over the change in my time, which is in seconds. I don't think this one squeaks as bad. All right, so again, this is just the, the slope formula, which means that I have to take my function, okay? So I take my actual function here, and I plug in t plus h, and then I plug in t all over h. So that's how we rewrote our average rate of change, so I'm finding average velocity. So what I'm going to do is I want to know at t equals 1, so everywhere I see a t, I'm going to plug in a 1 into my function, and everywhere I see an h, I'm just going to do this first one, and I'll leave it to you to do the last ones. So that says take my formula here, which is 5t, where I see t, I'm going to plug in a 1 plus 0 0.1, 1 plus 0 0.1 squared, so that's t squared, plus 3, so that's this side. And now I'm going to take and I'm going to simply plug in where I see a t, I'm going to plug in a 1. So 1 squared plus 3, and then all divided by my h, which I said I'm going to do that first one, which is 0 0.1. Okay, so this is probably the hardest part when students first learn this is, what do I do with all these values? You're just simply plugging in, and it might be, you know, it might have been good to actually add another step here and say that I'm doing 1 plus 0 0.1 minus s of 1, and so now you can see what my t values are, and you can see what my h values are. And you throw all that in a calculator, and you should get 10.5. So this first one, I get 10.5. If you do this all over again, and now your h becomes 0 0.01, you will see you'll get 10.05. If you do this all over again, you'll see you get 10.005. And what they're trying to show you is as h gets smaller and smaller and smaller, it looks like my limiting value is going to 10. And that's the whole key to all of this, is as I let that gap get smaller and smaller and smaller, what is this function going to? And it looks like it's going to 10. So this is average rate of change, changing my gap value. That's it.